welcome back to Curriculum Spotlight. This video will be on Math Mammoth, which is currently on sale at Homeschool Buyers Co-op through the end of March 2017, in case you're watching this after that. I will have that linked below. It's a great time to pick it up if you decide you want it. They usually do want a sale in September too, but that's after the school year starts, so <laughs> now would be a great time to choose it. She also runs a sale on her own site, but I think it's during the summer, but I don't know when, so I hesitate to give you any information on that. Math Mammoth is a program we have used for many years now. They start with grade one, go up through grade seven. She has three different lines. One is a light blue line, which is your typical grade level program. It is a complete program. The second one is the regular blue, which is topical. So you might have a topic on cl like clocks, for example, but several grade levels of it or dividing or whatever. So that's a great supplement, especially if you already have a curriculum that you really like, but maybe it's a week in an area or two. It's a great way to supplement just what you need. And the third one is the Gold and Green series, and that is more of a review or a supplemental one, different worksheets um, done by topics. Costs really vary depending on what you choose. And since there's so many different versions, I don't want to give prices for all of them. That would be tedious. But for three grade levels of the regular blue series, it's $75 for the PDFs. So you will have to print them out. You can buy a printed version she uses a separate printer, but I think it's probably, unless you just don't have a great printer, probably cheaper to print it yourself or take it to like Office Max and get it printed from there. You can buy it from Math Mammoth's website, Homeschool Buyers Co-op, Rainbow Resource has the printed version of it, EduSense will have the printed version of it at times too, and I think that's all the places you can buy it. So let's hop in to what I like and what I don't like about it. Number one, I really like that she starts off the um, each topic with a very concrete introduction to it for the child. Um, you know, for things like multiplying and adding, they'll use dots and different pictographs and or pictures and such. And as you go through the lessons, they move you, move you to a more mental math abstract type approach to it. So I really like that it does that. So it's not a lot of kids, so most kids aren't um, great at mental math straight away. I like that they move you to that. They start easy, but some curriculum, you kind of start concrete, but don't lead kids to a more mental abstract way of viewing it, of doing math. So I really appreciate that. And they start that even down in the first grade book. The second thing I like about it, it's a very Singapore style approach, but less teacher intensive. I loved Singapore and it's what I used with Elizabeth for grades one through three. But as I added more children, it became much more difficult for me to manage how each lesson I have you know, I had to direct it and all the different resources. So I really appreciate that about this. I still would teach her, you know, the first part of it, but then, and depending on, I would still teach her the first part of it, and depending on the day, we might go through the whole lesson together, or I might do part of the lesson with her and then have her work independently. But I didn't have to do it all. So that is a big bonus for me with Math Mammoth. I think she was so well prepared for pre-algebra with it. We, she finished fifth grade Math Mammoth in like beginning of March when, of her fifth grade year. And I took the sixth grade and just kind of picked areas that maybe she needed review or were new. She finished that the rest of sixth grade and our rest of fifth grade. And then in sixth grade, we moved her to pre-algebra. It was a very seamless transition. We used Lyle pre-algebra. Tr 
transition was very seamless. It was, I think she was really well prepared for it. This year she's doing algebra and she's having no problems with it. Um, so I really think, it, I would feel very confident recommending it as a strong math program. Cons, biggest con to me is there are a lot of problems. Now, not on the level of like a Saxon math, but there were a lot and this is one of the reasons why I don't use it with my middle child. For him it was just too much. For Elizabeth, I... Some lessons I would make her do all of it. Some lessons, you know, as we started the topic, she would have to do all of them and then as she progressed through and showed mastery of it, I would have her just do like the evens or the odds or whatever. If you have a child or you yourself that feel like you have to do every problem, this might not be a great program for you if you can't just shake it off and <laughs> do that because there's, there are a lot. Now, the plus side of that is that it's really helpful for students who do need a lot of practice. It is a mastery type, mastery approach. So if you are looking for a spiral, this may not work for you. What I have done with my youngest, um, since he is still a first grader and needs a lot of review with it. We leave pages blank or sections blank as we're working through it. And then, you know, usually on Fridays, I will have us go back. We'll just go back through his binder and find problems that weren't done. And we will do them again as to kind of make, make it a spiral, but not actually. It is very easy to implement. It's open and go. There's no prep involved. There are, she does give you links for games and review. So if that's the only thing that I would say might be prep is if you want to use those, you have to pull them up out of the PDF and print them or link them. But that's not, it's not hard to do <laughs> or time consuming. Do I use it now? I do use it now for Matthew, my first grader. He is working through 2A right now. Elizabeth used it, like I said, through sixth grade. Ben, it was just not a good fit for him. He is using Beast Academy, which I also have up. So if you are looking for something else, I have that. And I have Clean Math too, if you're looking for something else. I will link both of those videos. After, like I said, after Elizabeth was sixth grade, we moved her into pre-algebra. So that's the only reason we're not using Math Math with her. My camera just died, so I had a camera switch. So if you're wondering why it suddenly looks different, that's why. Other things to know about the program. You do have to print it. Like I said, if you buy the PDF version, what I did with Elizabeth would, I was print it and then take each semester's worth over to Office Max or wherever and have them bind it. That way it was a little more secure, kept in place. With Matthew, I've just used a three ring binder mostly because I just didn't get there. And I wasn't sure how much, if we would actually stick with it for him since it was his first year using it or what we would do. Next year, I will probably um, have it bound for him. Number two, there is, she has great customer service. So if you have any questions about the program or what to choose, definitely send her an email. Three, there are, she has a section where you can sign up for her the newsletter and you'll get 400 pages of samples. That's an extensive amount of samples. So you can definitely play around and see if it's something that would work for your child or not. The blue topics that I mentioned, you can get three free of those she has as downloads. So that's another great way to test it out with your child and see if it'll be a good fit for you or not. She does have a placement test. So if you're not, sh if you're coming from a different curriculum and you're not sure where to place your child, definitely check out the placement test. I found it pretty accurate. If you have any questions about the program, be sure to leave me a comment below. I will do my best to answer them. And now we'll turn down the camera. I'm going to show you a few different pages from a couple different grade levels so that you can have a good idea. This is Matthews. And like I said, he is doing 2A. Each grade level is divided into 2A, 2B. Um, so on this lesson, they are working with a trick for adding nines and tens, um, where you're grouping to make 10. So it starts off with an explanation of what's going on with some examples. And like I said, they, you know, they're showing you with the pictures and then having the kids 
um, write them in numerals as well. And then moving down to here, they're doing the same thing that they did up here, but just with numbers. And then doing it. And they're doing that with the eights. And then by the third page in the lesson, and I don't think I mentioned each lesson is usually um, two to three pages, but not necessarily, like we don't necessarily do a full lesson each day. It depends on the subject um, and time, how quickly they're getting it. Then she includes some word problems, more practice with the tricks, but making groups of tens, and then same thing down here. And then they have these puzzle corners. I don't know how frequently, but regularly, pretty regularly. And um, it takes whatever they've learned in that lesson and kind of takes it to another level. So um, we usually do the puzzle corners. Now his thing is out of order, so just warning you as I flip through, flip through it. Um, so practicing with adding 20s and now we're in the middle of a coin lesson. Uh, <laughs> for here's a full coin lesson. So again they start out with concrete actual coins then this side uses them as numbers but without it and then more and then practicing with the adding down here. It is in color, but there's not a lot of color. If you want to include it, um, it's usually just like the boxes. Like on this one, it's like purple. I don't know if you can see that. This one is the review before. I don't think I mentioned each one has a test as well, each chapter. Um, but here's the review before. Just goes over each thing that they practice with. The reviews are usually longer, four pages usually, or three. Here's this page that's the adding and subtracting two digits. You can see they start out very concrete with the dots. And moving in to not using the dots. Sometimes she'll do things like this that I really like because it forces the kids not to solve the answer, but just to look at the numbers and figure out what they can tell from that. Another puzzle corner. So this is one of the lessons from the fourth grade. And they're practicing, before this they had practiced adding and subtracting thousands or hundreds. And now she's moving them to the edge of thousands. So again, as you can see, starts off very concrete and then moves to just the numbers. At the beginning of each chapter, she has a section on where she tells you what's going to happen, kind of why she lays it out that way, as well as you know, an index of it and how many pages on, are on it. So that's really helpful for planning purposes, but I don't print this out. This is something I just take off, you know, I just check, pull up the PDF to look at. So this comes from sixth grade, second semester. I think this, the way she does integers, is one of the best one best ones that I've seen. I think it really made a good transition for coming to pre-algebra for Elizabeth. Um, since it's a new topic, obviously, she gives you the introduction and several examples usually for it. Um, I like that she does it in words and in the pictures. Moves down to practicing with it and uses both the pictures and the numbers. And then in this one you have to write the problem for it. And then she gives a little more information. She will do this often. Um, after they've had some initial practice she'll give a little more to move for what the rest of the lesson is. So then we're comparing them. 
So again, more mental math and then <clears throat> doing the practicing without the counters or the pictures in this case. So that's a look inside Math Mammoth. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them below. Thanks for watching.